I am Muhammad Ali, lecturer in English from Department of English, Government Postgraduate College Attack for online classes. Today is 1st September 2020. This online class is for M English Part 1 and uh, we are studying Pride and Prejudice and uh, uh, we are discussing the life and the age of Jane Austen and uh, this novel Pride and Prejudice uh, it is from paper 3 that is novel first. Let us uh, discuss uh, the overview of Jane Austen's works and her books. Jane Austen was popular for her six major novels which interpret, critic and comment upon the British landed gentry at the end of the 18th century. Jane Austen's plots often explored the dependence of women on marriage in the pursuit of favorable social standing and economic security. Her works critic or criticize or evaluate the novels of sensibility of the second half of the 18th century and are part of the transition to 19th century literary realism. Her use of biting irony along with her realism, humor and social commentary have long earned her acclaim or applause or praise among critics, scholars and popular audiences alike. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, the list of uh, uh, works written by Jane Austen. So, let us start. First is Sense and Sensibility uh, that was uh, uh, composed in 1811. It is full length novel. Next is Pride and Prejudice that was in 1813. It is also full length novel. Mansfield Park that was in 1814, it is also full length novel. Emma that was in 1815, it is also a full length novel. Northanger Abbey that was published in 1817, uh, posthumous means after the death of Jane Austen, it is also full length novel. Next is Persuasion uh, that was also uh, in 1817, uh, posthumous means after the death of Jane Austen. It is also full length novel. So, these are six popular novels composed by Jane Austen. Next is Lady Susan that was written in 1794, but published in 1871 posthumously. Unfinished fiction or novels. The first is The Watsons that was in 1804 and then Sanditon that was uh, in 1817. Next is Sir Charles Grandison that was adopted play uh, in 1793 and 1800. Plan of a novel in 1815, poems from 1796 to 1817. Prayers from 1796 to 1817, letters 1796 to 1817, Juvenilia, volume the first from 1787 to 1793, Frederick and Alfreda, uh, Juvenilia stories, Jack and Alice, Juvenilia stories, Edgar and Emma, Juvenilia stories, Henry and Eliza, Juvenilia stories. The Adventures of Mr. Harley, uh, Sir William uh, Mountain, Memoirs of Mr. Clifford, The Beautiful Cassandra, Amelia Webster, The Visit, 
the mystery, the three sisters, a beautiful description, the generous curate, Ode to Pity, and next is Juvenilia, volume the second, from 1787 to 1793, Love and Friendship, Juvenilia Stories, Leslie Carson, The History of England, also Juvenilia Stories, a collection of letters, a novel, the female philosopher scraps, the first act of a comedy scraps, a letter from a young lady scraps, a tour through Wales scraps. Similarly, there is also a tale, Juvenilia, volume the third, from 1787 to 1793, Evelyn, Juvenilia stories, Catherine Ardabur, Juvenilia stories. Uh, let us discuss first period of writing. Jane Austen started writing early when she was in her middle teens. She wrote at first to amuse her family. According to popular report, she wrote sitting in the parlor and all her family comings and goings. She did not like anyone to know what she was doing and wrote upon small scraps of paper which could be hastily thrust into the desk if the callers arrived. Let us discuss Juvenilia. Jane Austen's early writings are included in three notebooks entitled Volume the First, Volume the Second, and Volume the Third. These writings, uh, including short novels, plays, etc., can be best described as the Juvenilia, for they were all done before she was 16. Most of these pieces are delightful burlesques of the contemporary novel of horror and sentiment. Jane Austen compiled fair copies of 29 early works into three uh, bound notebooks, now referred to as the Juvenilia, containing work written between 1787 and 1793. She called the three notebooks volume the first, volume the second, and volume the third, and they preserve 90,000 words she wrote during those years. The juvenilia are, according to Richard uh, Jenikins, boisterous, noisy, and unruly, and anarchic or disordered. He compares them to the work of 18th century novelist Lawrence Stern. Previously from the age of 11 and perhaps earlier Jane Austen wrote poems and stories for her own and her family's amusement. According to Jane Todd, in these works the details of daily life are exaggerated or overstated, common plot devices are parodied and the stories are full of anarchic or disorder fantasies of female power, lessons, illicit or illegal behavior and general high spirits. Among these works, there is a, a satirical novel in letters titled Love and Friendship, written at age 14 in 1790, in which she mocked popular novels of sensibility. The next year, in 1791, she wrote The History of England, a manuscript or handwritten of 34 pages, accompanied by 13 watercolor miniatures or small by her sister Cassandra, Jane Austen's history parodied popular historical writing, particularly Olive, Oliver Goldsmith's History of England that was in 1764. Honan speculates that not long after writing Love and Friendship, Jane Austen decided to write for profit, to make stories her central effort, that is, to become a professional writer. When she was around 18 years old, Jane Austen began to write longer, more sophisticated works. In August 1792, aged 17, Jane Austen started writing Catherine on the Bower, which foretold her mature work, especially Northanger Abbey. It was left unfinished, and the story picked up in Lady Susan, which Todd describes as less predicting than Catherine. A year later she began, but abandoned a short play later titled such as Grandison or the Happy Man, a comedy in six acts, which she returned to and completed around 1800. This was a short parody of various 
uh, school textbook abridgments or synopsis of Jane Austen's favorite contemporary novel, The History of Sir Charles Grandison, uh, that was composed in 1753 by Samuel Richardson. When Jane Austen became an aunt for the first time at age 18, she sent newborn niece Fanny Catherine Austen Knight five short pieces of the juvenilia now known collectively as scraps, purporting to be her opinions and admonitions on the conduct of young women. For niece Jane, Anna Elizabeth Austen, also born in 1793, Jane Austen wrote two more miscellaneous morsels, dedicating them to Anna on uh, 2nd June 1793, convinced that if you seriously attend to them, you will drive from the very important instructions with regard to your conduct in life. There is a manuscript evidence that Jane Austen continued to work on these pieces as late as 1811 when she was 36 and that her niece and nephew Anna and James Edward Austen made further additions as late as 1814. Between 1793 and 1795, age 18 to 20, Jane Austen wrote Lady Susan, a short pastorary novel usually described as her most ambitious and sophisticated early work. It is unlike any of Jane Austen's other works. Jane Austen biographer Claire Tomlin describes the novella's heroine as a sexual predator or killer who uses her intelligence and charm to manipulate or control and abuse her lovers, friends and family. Tomlin writes, told in letters, it is as neatly plotted as a play and as cynical or pessimistic in tune as any of the most outrageous or offensive of the restoration dramatists who may have provided some of her inspiration. It stands alone in Jane Austen's work as a study of an adult woman whose intelligence and force of character are greater than those of any man she encounters. According to Jane Toad, the model for the title character may have been Eliza D. Folide, uh, Folida, who inspired Jane Austen with stories of her glamorous life and various adventures. Eliza's French husband was guillotined in 1794, mean his, uh, his head was cut uh, during the French Revolution. She married Jane Austen's brother Henry Austen in 1797. Eleanor and Marion, after finishing Lady Susan, Jane Austen began her first full length novel, Eleanor and Marion. It was her first serious work, Eleanor and Marion, a novel in the form of letters, was written in 1795 when she was 20. It was later recast as Sense and Sensibility in 1797. Her sister remembered that it was read to the family before 1796 and was told through a series of letters without surviving original manuscripts. There is no way to know how much of the original draft survived in the novel published anonymously in 1811 as Sense and Sensibility. First Impressions Jane Austen began a second novel, First Impressions, later published as Pride and Prejudice in 1796-97. She completed the initial draft in August 1797, aged 21. As with all of her novels, Jane Austen read the work aloud to her family as she was working on it, and it became an established favorite. At this time, her father made the first attempt to publish one of her novels. In November 1797, George Austen wrote to Thomas Carroll, an established publisher in London, to ask if he would consider publishing first impressions. Cadre returned Mr. Austen's letter, marking it, declined by return of post. Jane Austen may not have known of her father's efforts. Following the completion of first impressions, Jane Austen returned to Eleanor and Marion and from November 1797 until mid 1798 revised it heavily. She eliminated the epistolary format in favor of third person narration and produced something close to sense and sensibility. In 1797, Jane Austen met her cousin and future sister-in-law, uh, Eliza de Folida, a French aristocrat uh, whose first husband, the comet de Folida, had been guillotined and his head was cut, causing her to flee to Britain, where she married Henry Austen, 
the description of the execution of comet de Folida related by his widow left Jane Austen with an intense horror of the French Revolution that took place in 1789 that lasted for the rest of her life. It was a bad influence. During the middle of 1798, after finishing revisions of Eleanor and Marianne, Jane Austen began writing a third novel with the working title Susan later Northanger Abbey, a style on the popular Gothic novel. Jane Austen completed her work about a year later in early 1803. Henry Austen offered Susan to Benjamin Crosby, a London publisher who paid uh, 10 pounds for the copyright. Crosby promised early publication and went so far as to advertise the book publicly as being in the press, but did nothing more. The manuscript remained in Crosby's hands unpublished until Jane Austen repurchased the copyright from him in 1816. In 1798, she attempted a style on Gothic novels in her North Northanger Abbey. These novels were not published then. With the publication of Sense and Sensibility in 1811, Pride and Prejudice in 1813, Mansfield Park in 1814, and Emma in 1816, she achieved success as a publisher, published writer. She wrote two additional novels, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, both published posthumously in 1817, uh, and began another eventually titled Sanditon, but she died before its completion. She also left behind three volumes of Jomina writings in manuscript, a short epistolary novel, Lady Susan, and another unfinished novel, The Wet Sons. A significant transition in her uh, posthumous reputation means after her death that occurred in 1813. Uh, her reputation occurred in 1813 when her novels were republished in Richard Bentley's standard novel series illustrated by Ferdinand Pickering and sold as a set. They gradually gained wider acclaim and popular readership. In 1869, 52 years after her death, her nephew's publication of a memoir of Jane Austen introduced a compelling version of her writing career and supposedly uneventful life to an eager audience. Her six full-length novels have rarely been out of print, although they were published anonymously and brought her moderate success and little fame during her lifetime. Despite only six completed books to her name, Jane Austen nonetheless remains a lasting presence in the world of English literature. Thank you very much.